So, hello and welcome to our lesson on Ranjikuta Second Order. So, we are discussing numerical methods for solving ordinary differential equations. And so far, we have discussed the Euler's method. So, in this video, we'll be discussing Ranjikuta Second Order. So, the Ranjikuta Second Order is a numerical technique for solving an ordinary differential equation of the form dy ds equals f of xy given an initial condition. So from all this, it means that the Ranjikuta first order is also used for solving first order ordinary differential equations with initial conditions. Okay. So let's learn how to derive the formula for the Ranjikuta second order. So to understand the Ranjikuta second order, we need to derive the Euler's method from the Taylor series. Okay. So the Taylor series is given by so when you have y i plus one, we have it to be given by y subscript i plus whatever you can see here okay so do you remember when you were treating the Euler's method we said the x i plus 1 minus x i is equal to h which is some, some step size or some interval so replacing all our s i plus 1 minus s i with h we are going to have this here. And as you can see, the first two terms of the Taylor series is this, all right? And that is the Euler's method. Can you see that? Yes. So the Euler's method can also be considered to be the Ranjikuta first order method. Okay. So that means to get the Ranjikuta second order method, we will take the first three terms and the rest will be the error term. Okay. So a second order method formula would include one or more term of the Taylor series as follow. So this is going to be the formula for the Ranjikuta second order. But when we get here, it is very difficult to compute our f prime of x i y i when we have some functions and as a result of that Ranji and Kuta what they did was that this thing here they wrote it in this form y i plus 1 equals y i plus a1 k1 plus a2 k2 h where the k1 was given as f of x i y i and k2 was given as f of x i plus p1 h then comma y i plus q1 1 k1 h okay so this was what Ranji and Kuta wrote for the second order so you could see that we have e1 e2 p1 and q1 okay so we had to solve for those constants. So we have three different approach in doing that. And we are going to discuss them. So they came up with these three system of equations with four unknowns. So we had a1 plus a2 equals 1. Um, we had a2 times p1 equals half and a2 k11 equals half so you could see that we have four unknowns that's a1 a2 p1 then k11 but we had three equations so generally in solving this system the value of a2 is chosen to evaluate the other three constants and the value of a2 can take three different values so it can take one over two it can take 1 and it can also take 2 over 3 and depending on the value 
which it takes, whether it takes half, it takes one, or it takes two or three, we have a name for it. So when it takes half, the name for it is the the Huygens method. Then when it takes one, we call it the midpoint method. Then when it takes two or three, we call it the Rastings method. Okay. So you could see that we had this. This was the general thing. So depending on which of the methods we use, either the midpoint, the Rastings, or the Huygens method, this is going to be written in a particular form. So that is what we are coming to do next. So with the Huygens method, we took our A2 to be half. So in taking our A2 to be half, when you come here and you find for the other constants, you are going to get A2 to be half, P1 to be 1, and Q11 to be 1. So when we put it inside this, this main equation here, okay, we are going to have what we can see here. And our K1 will be given as this, and our K2 will be given as this. So that's for the Huygens, right? The Huygens method. Then with the midpoint formula, we take A2 to be 1. And when you take A2 to be 1 and you find for the other constants, we get A1 to be 0, P1 to be half, and Q11 to be half. So with that one, too, we will have our Yi plus 1 to be given as this, and our K1, K2 to be given as that. Then with the last method, the Rastings method, that's when we take a2 to be 2 on 3 and our a1 will be 1 over 3 our p1 will be 3 on 4 and our q1 will be 3 on 4 as well so it will result in what we can see here okay so that means when you are given the a question and you are asked to solve using the Rangikuta second order you have to use one of these methods and mostly a question will specify which of the method you are supposed to use. Maybe the question doesn't specify that we mostly use the Huygens method, okay? That's the first one. So let's solve an example. Okay, so you should you if you could recall we solved this question using the OLS method. So you're coming to use the Rangikuta second order to do the same thing. So it says a ball at 1200 Kelvin is allowed to cool down in air at an ambient temperature of 300 Kelvin. Assuming heat is lost only due to radiation, the differential equation for the temperature of the ball is given by what we can see here, where theta is in Kelvin and T is in seconds. So we have to find the temperature at T equals 480 seconds using the Ranikuta second order method. So specifically the Huygens method, and we shall assume a step size of h equals 240 seconds. Okay, so let's solve this question. So you can see that our d theta dt was given as this in the question, right? And we said that the range kuta second order is used to solve. First, other ordinary differential equations with an initial condition. So here the initial condition was theta of 0 equals 1200. Mm -hmm. So that means from this differential equation here, the whole of this is our f of t theta, right, which is given here. So, we are supposed to find theta of 480 degrees, and we've been given a step size of 240. What this means is that we are supposed to do two iterations, and now will give us what's 480. And per the Huygens method, we have theta i plus 1 will be equal to theta i plus whatever we have here. So, there's a formula for it. I hope you can see that. We've just changed the x's and the y's to theta and t. So that means doing the first iteration, 
we have to get the initial condition from the question to do that. And at i equals zero, our time t naught is zero, and our theta naught is equal to thousand two hundred. So that can be seen from the initial condition which was given that theta of zero was equal to thousand two hundred from the question. Play from the question, you can see that. Okay, so I was supposed to add this. So that means that t naught is zero, theta naught is thousand two hundred, and our step size h is two hundred fourteen. So when you make substitution into the formula, you're going to get theta one will be equal to theta naught plus one over two k one plus one over two k two, then times 240 so theta 1 will be 1200 because theta naught is 1200 then plus 1 over 2k1 plus 1 over 2k2 times 240 so that means that to be able to do this we need our k1 and k2 and this is a formula for finding for k1 you know k1 is equal to f of t i theta i so here i is equal to zero so k1 is equal to f of t naught theta naught which is the same as k1 is equal to f of t naught is zero theta naught is thousand two hundred that's what you can find here so you find f of zero thousand two hundred and you can see that f of t theta is given here so that means wherever you find theta we put thousand two hundred there so evaluating that will give us what we can see here and finally, we will get negative 4.5579. So that's for K1. Then to get K2, we said K2 is giving us F of Ti plus H. Right? Then we have Theta I plus K1H. So that is what we have here. So you can see that our t naught is 0, h is 214, so 0 plus 214. Our theta naught is 1200 plus h, which is 240, and k1 is negative 4.5579. So we get k2 because f of 214. Evaluating this will give us 106.0947. So that means wherever you find theta, we put 106.0947 there. And evaluating that will give us k2 to be. 0.017595. So that means you're going to get theta 1 when you make substitution, right, into this. Now we have k1 and k2. So we can find theta 1. That will be giving us what we have here. And when we evaluate this, we are getting negative 544.8366. So theta 1 will be 655. Point one six three four, and saying the step size was two forty, that means the first iteration you are going to get theta one will be equal to theta of what two forty, which will be what we can see here six five five point one six three four. So our theta of two forty is six five five point one six three four. Well, we are interested in theta of 418 so that means we have to do a second iteration so you know at i equals 1 our t1 will be equal to t0 plus h which will be 0 plus 240 which will give us 240 and our theta 1 is equal to what we just found 655.1634 if you know that using the Green's method, our theta 2 will be given by theta 1 plus 1 over 2k1 plus 1 over 2k2 all times h. So we have to find k1 and k2. And k1 is equal to f of t1 theta 1, which will be f of 240.655.1639. So evaluating that will give us negative 0.38870. So now we have to evaluate K2. So K2 will be equal to 
f of 240 plus h which is also 240 then theta 1 plus h k1 all right so that's what you can see here so when we evaluate this we'll get 561.8754 so that means you're supposed to put 561.87 forever you find theta and that will give us this and when we finally evaluate we get negative 0 0.202065 so now we have k1 and k2 coming to put that into our main formula here we'll get theta 2 be equal to this plus the whole of this and when we evaluate that we get 584.2716 kelvin hence theta of 480 is equal to 484.2717 kelvin and that was what the question asked us to what fine okay so you can guess around questions online and try to use the Huynes method, you can use the midpoint method or the Rastings method, right, to do that. Okay. So, note that using a, sm a smaller step size would increase the accuracy of the result. So, you see, we use a step size of h equals 240. So, we only had to do two iterations to get toward theta of 418. But if you had this a step size of, let's say, h equals 48 and then we would have had to do 10 iterations before we get to our theta of 418 and here we did just two iterations and here we are doing 10 iterations that means when we do more iterations we will get a better result like our results will be more accurate than using what just doing two iterations so that means when your step size is smaller the result is more accurate than when the step size is what larger okay so that's it with the ranikuta second order so in our next video we'll talk about the ranikuta fourth order okay so see you in the next video